if you don't know who Sarah Caroli is, then I don't know what to tell you. I guess you just clicked on this video because you're loyal and probably one of the two people that watch my videos, which like, thank you for that. I appreciate it. I love Sarah Curley though. I absolutely adore her and I trust her book recommendations. My dog just sighed so loudly. He's over this already. Sarah Caroli has been absolutely obsessed with this one book series. I've gone ahead and purchased it and we're gonna read it. Of course I'm talking about the Magnolia Park series. And if you know anything about Sarah, you know that this is one of the first series she will force you to read. I broke it down. This has 494 pages in it. This one has 424 pages in it. This one has 524 pages in it. And then this book is 436 pages. In total, there are 1,879 pages. Shall we, shall we start? I just read page one and it's like, dang, that was really good. I, I think I'm gonna like this book. I'm just gonna read you the first page. How many loves do you get in a lifetime? How many people do you get to call yours? There are all sorts of loves in this world. Not all of them, but most of them are beautiful. Some are old, some noble, some brave. Others are dishonorable and weak and make you so by association. Some are a low whisper on a somber night. Some are ma maddening. Some you can't ignore. They slow burn inside of you, never quite going out completely, but you're too scared to dare to try to fan that flame. Some loves you pretend you don't feel, even when you can, even when you know you do, even if he's the first thing you think of in the morning, even if he's like a match in the darkened room of your heart, because loving something how you love him is a painful love that puts rocks in your pockets and melancholy in your eyeballs, and if time has taught you anything, so that it doesn't matter. You'll love him forever anyway. Like, dang. Okay, I'm in, I'm sold. Let's do this. Thank you, Sarah. I've only read the first two chapters of this book and there's already quite a bit of annotating going on. I have read 28 pages. I've read 28 pages and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight tabs in 28 pages. This is, this is gonna be a moment for me. I just wanna talk about the first two chapters. You've got Magnolia Parks and you've got her on again, off again boyfriend, BJ. And you're hearing the story between their two POV. It looks like they've been in a relationship since they were 15. That's when he fell in love with her, I guess. Like that's when they were, they started dating. He fell in love with her. They were 15. This book has made me laugh quite a few times. For instance, there's this one scene where Magnolia just broke up with her latest boyfriend, uh, something Callaway. His last name's Callaway. She goes out to dinner with a group of her friends and she sees her ex-boyfriend and she's like, and he's with another girl. And she's like, what the heck? Like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, we've been seeing each other for three to four months. And she's like, we dated for five, which means he cheated on her for three or four months. She was like, what is going on here? Like, how dare you? Everybody doesn't even know that they've broken up at this point. So how dare you like do this to her? He's like, well, you're here with BJ, like blah, blah, blah. Anyways, there's this comedic scene where he announces to everyone, he's like, yeah, she liked my knob because uh, BJ says, calls him a knob and he's like, oh, you know who liked my knob? She did. There's this funny moment where she's like, that is completely inaccurate. It's kind of underwhelming and it's like mediocre at best. And she looks at his date and she's like, sorry. And she's like, no, I've seen it. And she goes, yeah, my condolences. And I just laughed. I loved that. I laughed so hard. I thought it was so funny. And then you got BJ's perspective in chapter two. And they're talking about how like, he's like lying in her bed and they're going to sleep. And there's this one thing that I just wanna, I just wanna read where he says, um, she's, got a, she's got a few different kinds of quiets, Park does. A quiet, a thinking quiet, a tired quiet, and a safe quiet. And I loved that. It's now 2.30, I started reading at noon. I am 88 pages read, so I'm on chapter 10 right now. I have tabbed the crap 
out of this book so far. I quite enjoy this book. I very much enjoy this book. I will say though that sometimes it's light and fluffy and then other times it smacks you right in the heart like a freight train and you like have to quickly like put like hold the pieces together until you can get to the next part where it's light and fluffy again because goodness gracious it will shatter you. There is this one part where BJ overdoses and she says this one line on the way to go to him as he's overdosing and she says it's made me not trust blue skies and that ripped me to shreds absolutely devoured my whole entire sanity and ripped it apart it was it was a lot though it was a whole moment it was a lot and then she goes back to being like fluffy and and funny and it, it's just such a wild ride like it is such a wild ride i have one one qualm and that's it that's all just one just one this is the one and only thing that bothers me about this book and it is the smallest detail it is the smallest smallest detail that no one else is going to care about. I'm only going to give you one example, but I've seen it twice happen. This is just a thing that bothers me. Woo-wa. Woo-wa. That's not how you spell woe. Woe is spelled W-H-O-A. I'm on chapter 29. I have just been like reading this throughout the day. I haven't just been sitting here reading. I played solitaire for a little bit. I just this book has me. I can't stop reading this and I'm I'm about halfway done. I'm on page 230 so I'm about halfway completed with this book. Honestly like I'm so glad that there's four out right now because I don't know if I can like give this up. There's a scene where Magnolia and her nanny are very close and her nanny was there for her when BJ cheated on her. Her nanny said, if he loved me how he said he did, he wouldn't have done it anyway. People don't accidentally have sex with people. It happens because people are careless and callous and casual with hearts and emotions and those people are dangerous to be involved with. The word of a cheater, she said, is void. She gave this advice to her and then Magnolia finds out that her nanny and her father have been having an affair for six years. It's so heartbreaking, especially because when Magnolia comes home, her nanny comes into her room and she's like, I feel like this isn't about me and your father and more about you. And it's like, how dare you turn this on her? Like, you're the cheater. You're the cheater. How dare you turn this on her? I really like Tom. I know Tom is her fake boyfriend, but he is like everything. If this was a real love triangle like it would be so good because Tom is perfect like he is just absolutely perfect and I absolutely love that he's in this story like that as well like I love that he is so perfect because it just kind of goes to show you can be the most perfect of perfect for a person and still not be the right person for them. I don't know if I'm gonna finish this tonight or not. I, I don't know. I kind of want to. Like, I very much want to. This is such a good book. I, I, I don't know why it took so long to read this. It's ripping my heart, but it's good. Okay, I just wanted to do a, another update. I have not read that much today. I'm on page 414, chapter 54, and there's only 494 pages left. So literally, I have 80 pages left of this book. It's not gonna take me that long to finish it. There's this one, I think this is BJ's perspective. Yeah, it's BJ BJ's perspective and it says the problem with me and Parks is I think we love each other more than ourselves and like it's the self-awareness self-awareness of of like the situation that they are putting themselves in and it's just so much and then there's this part where she's having a conversation with her sister her sister Bridget her younger sister goes you might be addicted to male attention and then she says dad never paid much attention to us not enough not the amount little girls need from their father anyway but BJ she gives me a knowing look he was your saving grace he looks at you and sees the sun so you were covered you didn't need a dad you had a BJ for years you were fine for years boys probably paid attention to you and you just didn't even know no, because all you saw was BJ and then he cheated on you and that undercut all the attention he'd paid you till then sullied it made it untrustworthy and invaluable so now I think maybe you just collect attention of men 
Keep it in your back pocket for a rainy day. Raise your hand if you have daddy issues. Anyways, I really like Tom. I understand that we get BJ's perspective, so the chances of her ending up with Tom are slim to numb. Like, I, I get that. This is a romance book, a romance. I don't know why I said it that way. But this is this book is about her and BJ, and I get that. I totally understand that. This is usually the part where, like, this is usually the part where, like, we see, okay, they're gonna work it out. But this is all conflict. Like, all of this has been conflict. And so I don't know how we're going to resolve this in this amount of pages. So I don't know. And plus there's a book too, which also leads me to believe that we're not going to get a BJ Magnolia love story by the end of this. It's just a lot. I know we're supposed to like BJ. I don't like BJ, but I don't like BJ because I think he's toxic. I think that's fine. He's young. My motto in my 20s was you should do as many stupid things as you can when you have little to no consequences. When I was, I think I was like 22, 21, 22. I don't remember, but I drove across country and decided to live in San Diego for seven years. I flew to Thailand because I didn't want to be with my boyfriend at the time. So I broke up with him and flew to Thailand for a couple weeks. Honestly, like I don't regret any of those memories. I have so many great memories from that. And I have so many amazing stories from that. I have so many weird stories from that. I don't, I'm not saying that they can't be together, but I am saying like, go be stupid, go be dumb, go do something and make a memory out of it. Because once you have the res responsibilities, and I am not saying that I regret getting married because I don't. My husband is the love of my life. He is my soulmate. Like, I've never known that I was supposed to be with someone so much as when I met him. I finished. I finished book one. I don't even have the words. This book completely shredded me. I don't really know, like, what to say. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I, I just, like, it just crushed me because I really thought, I don't know. I just, it's so much worse, the cheating. It's so much worse. And I know what you're thinking, like, how could it get worse? It does. Throughout the whole book, you have his perspective. Even when he was sleeping around, he constantly was thinking of Magnolia. Like, it was always in the back of his mind. But when he cheated, he didn't think of her at all. And it makes it worse. I, I don't even... I don't even know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I'm disappointed in BJ. I'm very disappointed in him. And I know that Magnolia is not blameless in that relationship, but she is less blameful. Like every time he backs her in a corner and then she acts out and then he's like, well, you shouldn't have done that. And it's like, th then don't make me. It was intense. It was a lot. And I'm kind of glad that book two is about Daisy Hates because I think I need a second from Magnolia. Oh, rating for this book. Should I just give the ratings at the end? I think I'm gonna give the ratings at the end because then I'll be able to give like a series rating and like individual ratings. So I think that's what I will do. Hi, um, me again. It is now 2.13. That's not gonna do it. 2.13 in the morning. And I decided that I didn't want to go to sleep. So this writing, like, do you see it's like normal like writing? This writing is not. This writing is small and it's Times New Roman. And it's just like a weird vibe. Whatever this is, it looks like Arial font that's like large. And that feels very Magnolia Parks. And Daisy Hates has only made like a couple appearances in magnolia parks but this like size 10 times new roman font seems very daisy hates so i don't know if jessa hastings did that on purpose but if she did that is a literary genius move right there am i gonna read a lot tonight i hope not i i do want to go to sleep before the sun wakes up however no promises. Okay, so it's actually one day later from the last time that I updated you. So far, first impressions, I've only read four chapters, but first impressions, this is vastly different from Magnolia. Um, this is more like mafia, but also, how do I say this? 
the state of Maine is a constitutional carry state. I, I, I hope that makes people understand. But I grew up around, how do I say this? I don't want to like get, I don't want YouTube to like, you know what I mean? I don't want YouTube to be like, no, you can't say that. So I'm trying to like walk around it, but we have three ranges. Uh, growing up, we had three ranges in our backyard. I lived on 80 acres of land and my dad ha had an indoor range and two outdoor ranges. And I utilized those ranges often. And so the very first chapter, I believe, there is a scene where somebody does get shot. Can I say that? I, I hope I can because I just did. It's impossible that people are having just a normal conversation afterwards. I'm just gonna say that. With somebody who has experienced with it, like, I, I'm so awkward right now because I don't, I don't want to like full on say, I don't want YouTube to be mad at me. Okay, anyways, um, I'm gonna go now. Okay, thank you, goodbye. yesterday but I I like read a lot I'm on chapter 49 on page 272 and I've read so much I have not been tabbing I just have that one little tab but I haven't been tabbing this book I just have been reading a lot and I don't feel like there's as many things to tab as there was in Magnolia's a book because like I feel like her book like they had so many lines and it was so gut-wrenching and this one is just kind of like there's a lot of heists there's a lot of mafia there's just more violence and I mean why would I I don't know if I would ever tab violence so I do really love Christian I adore him more than BJ because I feel like BJ was a child when he was upset he never used his words he just would like argue and like be like well even though I broke us it's not my fault because you didn't forgive me and it's like so stupid and he drove me crazy but Christian even though Christian has very similar like coping mechanisms to BJ where like he still isn't like using his words when he does use his words and he's like look I'm not good at this like I'm not good at using my words but Daisy is so Daisy kind of helps him along and is like okay like if you want this then you need to use your words I'm also scared because right now they're so happy and look how much is left guys but they're so happy right now things are going so well and look that can't be good that can't be good by the way I love Bridget like I just wish her nothing but the best. I love Bridget. She's so funny in the first book. She's so funny and like, I don't know, I just really like her. Also, Henry bothers me sometimes because he's a little too protective of, Mag of Magnolia and like the way he treats Christian, I'm like, listen, like I get it. Magnolia is your bestie. She's like your sister. But at the same time, could you please acknowledge that some of this is definitely 100% her fault. I think Christian is doing his absolute best. Daisy also needs to figure things out. I'm also glad that Daisy did not become Magnolia because I thought that this was just gonna be Magnolia 2.0, just in different font. And I'm so glad that it's not like that because I was irritated when Romeo came onto the scene and she was like, oh yeah, like he was the love of my life. I was so irritated by that. I was like, no, no, we're not doing another tri love triangle. Like. We did a love triangle with the other girl. You gotta figure out something else to do. And there is kind of still a love triangle because of Christian and Magnolia's relationship, but I don't know how to say this. Like, it's not significant. It's not, it doesn't matter at the moment. I'm assuming it's gonna matter because we still haven't gotten to Julian's birthday party. This scares me. What's gonna happen in 150 pages? I'm so scared. With all due respect, I finished this yesterday. I was so seething mad. I was like, no, I need to calm down. I was livid with how Daisy treated Christian, first of all. He did not deserve any of that. And I was really frustrated with how she dealt with everything. Just everything, the last 150 pages, all the way down. I was, First of all, I was so mad with Julian's birthday party. Like we saw that in Magnolia's 
book. But I was so mad with Christian's point of view because he's literally talking about how he feels bad for BJ and my gosh, Magnolia is so messed up and I'm so over this and she's so dramatic and I'm just over it. And then you've got Daisy who's like, he's still in love with her. No, that's not any of what happened. None of that happened. If she had literally just used her words and honestly, I think I'm more upset with Daisy than I am with Magnolia because Daisy goes off to make it a point to say she has the highest IQ in the room. Like she makes it a point to make sure everyone knows that she's got the highest IQ in the room. And yet she is the worst person in the room, the lowest EQ does not use her words, does things specifically to get a reaction from people. She is so manipulative. She's so whiny. She's so spoiled. I was so mad. I was so mad. And Christian deserved better, like 20 million times better. Christian deserved better. I hope that in the second Daisy Hates book that Christian gets his redemption. He deserved so much better. He was such a great character throughout this book. Not really sure why Rome was there. He could have been an email. Not really sure why Julian was there. He could have been an email. Honestly, there are a lot of people in there that I was like, don't know why you're here. Don't know what you bring to the table, but here you are. Like the Lost Boys. I don't know. And also, this is a hot take but you're in a crime family. I don't know what you expected. It's a crime family. I don't know what you expected, babe. Did you expect honesty? Cause I don't know why you thought, I don't, not saying he was right, but I don't know what you expected from a notorious criminal. We shall see how the rest of the series goes. I'm glad that the next book to read is Magnolia's version again, or not version, but like her point of view again. So I'm excited for that because honestly, like I'm over Daisy. I don't want anything to do with her anymore. I'm, I'm so done. I just had to rant though. I just had to like very quickly rant. So yeah. Okay. Goodbye. I think the last time I updated you, I just finished Daisy Hates. I have started Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home. I'm on page 119, chapter 20. So far, I love this. I've cried multiple times. I've, I've probably left like 45 minutes worth of voice notes. Just me crying in the first 30 pages. Wow, we, we start off strong in pain. I don't know what it is. I think I just love Magnolia way more than Daisy. And I think a lot of that has to do with how they present themselves to the world, you know? Like Magnolia, take it or leave it, like she knows who she is. Whereas Daisy pretends to be someone she's not. Books one and two were books one and two, but Jessa Hastings writing in book three is just another level. I don't know what happened. I don't know if she hired an editor. I don't know if she hired anyone to help her with her writing or if she took a master class. I don't know what went down, but her writing has significantly matured since the first two books. And I don't want to say that her writing was bad prior. It wasn't by any means. It was already phenomenal, but now it's just phenomenal times 10? I don't know. <laughs> Bridget is like the best sister ever. She's so wonderful. I love her so much. I just want her to like thrive in life. You know what I mean? Like she's just somebody who I feel she deserves to have that like quiet, happy lifestyle. You know what I mean? I just want the best for Bridget. She's such a good sister. She's such a good sister. And then Tara, I think that's how you say your name. She's one of the greatest characters in the world like she's just first of all she's so well written she's so complex and she's definitely a girl that i could see she's a girl's girl even though she has quite the active nightlife she is a girl's girl at the end of the day like she's somebody that if you told her hey i really like this guy please don't sleep with him, she's not going to. The way she understands Magnolia, the way she takes care of Magnolia, it's really good. And then you find out like Tara's back history with Magnolia and it's like, wow, she's, she was a, 
a friend to Magnolia before she was a friend to Magnolia. I despise BJ, despise him full heartedly. I feel like he's giving way too many excuses. And I feel like he keeps saying that he's doing everything that he's doing. He's doing it for Magnolia. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing it. It feels very selfish. He feels like he's gaslighting her. It feels like he's blaming. He's just like, oh, well, people were mean to me. So I'm going to be mean back. That's how it feels. That's not what he says at all. Like he, I'm not invalidating his trauma. He went through something. I'm just saying that so did Magnolia. And you can't, you can't say like, oh, well, I was traumatized. So I wanted to hurt you. And I successfully did that. You can't say that and blame your trauma and say, and then turn around and be like, well, I'm not blaming my trauma. Like I still did something wrong, but at the same time, like, I can't take full responsibility because of my trauma. Like you can't say that because Magdolia's also gone through trauma and she did not do that. Like she didn't even come close to even thinking of ever doing that. And I'm just, I'm so angry and frustrated by, by BJ specifically. And then knowing, knowing what happened, fully knowing their history, fully getting the backstory of everything. BJ is 20 million times worse now and I don't think there's ever anything coming back. I will say that Magnolia is taking BJ's route now. She's drinking a lot and she's sleeping around a lot. So I, I think they've kind of made Magnolia the new BJ, but I still feel like there is no redeeming BJ after all that he's put her through. There's no redeeming them. I think they should have broken up. I think they should have broken up and I think they need to stay broken up. I don't think they should ever get back together because quite honestly, BJ sucks. All right. So I'm on chapter 33. I just finished chapter 32. Don't mind my voice. I'm kind of losing it a little bit. Goodness gracious. I hate BJ with a passion, with every fiber of my being. Can't stand him. Wish he would grow a pair. Honestly, why is Jordan still in this book? She should have been gone on chapter two. Like, why is she still here? Absolutely adore Bridget love Bridget so much. I hope nothing but the best for her. Tara, absolutely love her. She's so funny. She's such a great friend. She truly, truly is. There's this scene where Perry and Magnolia like run into each other and oh, pfft, that was a mess. That was an absolute mess. Disaster. Completely disaster. And I get it. Like I do because like from his perspective, he's like trying to be his best friend's best friend. But at the same time, like if you're gonna be her best friend, then just walk away. Like, you know what I mean? Turn around, walk away, do something else. I don't know, figure out your life. But like, buddy, come on. I really like this book. I really like this story. <laughs> I don't wanna stop reading, if you know what I mean. Like, it's hard for me to make these updates because I don't want to stop. Something's happening. I don't know what, but something's happening and I'm not happy about it. I hate BJ. I hate BJ so much. They were happy for one chapter. Not even a full chapter. This is what he should have done. He should have texted Jordan right before. You know what I mean? Like he just should have texted her. Hey, it's over. It's over. Don't tell her that you miss her. Don't text her and tell her that you miss her. Just tell her that it's over. That's all he had to do was tell her it was over and then none of this would have happened. I don't like him. I don't like him and he's giving me a headache. So that's fun. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to say here. It's the amount. I am so mad right now. It is the amount of anger that I have right now. Like, you don't even understand. I'm so mad right now. It's the way he keeps messing up. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, could he just for once, for once, use your freaking words, BJ? Gosh. I feel like I need to take a run. I feel like I want to take a boxing class. Like, I just, I need a second. I just need a second. I finished. 
I finished this book, but wait, there's more. I also finished this book and there's no footage of me reading this book because where I read it, I didn't feel comfortable filming myself and reading at the same time. So I didn't, I didn't film any of this. I have to talk about this. I finished the whole Magnolia Parks, Mag I don't know why I said it that way. I finished the whole Magnolia Parks series and I feel like I am in such turmoil. I feel so sad that it's over because it was such a great series. It was so good. This book though, I sobbed. I have never cried so hard. I thought that I had cried a lot in this book. Like I thought that book one like had ripped my heart out. I thought that I just cried so much, but then I read this one and, and then, and then I read this one and it just was like, pain after pain after turmoil after turmoil and it just was so heartbreaking at the end of it. I don't know. Julian deserves so much better. He... Julian deserves better and I... I didn't like him in the first two books. I was like I don't know why he's here. I know why he's here. He is so important. He changed everything. Like he just, he just did. He changed everything. He was so good. He was so good. And I'm so, oh my gosh. Like he was great. He was great. He was good. He was a, yeah, he was a very good character. And yeah, I don't like BJ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't like BJ because I felt like he just had an excuse for everything and then I also felt like even when he was saying like things were, hit, even when he was saying this is my fault, I did this, I caused this, even when he was saying things like that, his actions did not follow his words. I don't know how to explain that but it just felt like he was using a lot of words and not following it up with any action. And I just felt like he weaponized his therapy, he weaponized his trauma. Like I just feel, I just feel like he wasn't genuine. I feel like at the end of it, he wasn't genuine. I think Julian was genuine. I think Julian did everything and then some. And I think that Christian, <laughs> Christian, oh my gosh, poor Christian and Bridget. I'm just gonna ignore the last chapter. I'm just gonna ignore that. I'm just gonna ignore that because Bridget's fine. She's fine, everything's fine. Bridget's okay. She's totally okay. Everything's fine. Anyways, I finished the series. I finished the whole series. Guys, do you see how many pages are here that I've read? So many pages, just so many, look how, look at that, that is an annotated book. I don't know what to do now. Like, I don't know what to read now. I don't know what to do. I don't know, like, how to feel. I don't, I don't know anything anymore. Do I recommend the series? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I wasn't a huge fan of the first Daisy Hates, and I really wasn't that big of a fan of the second Daisy Hates, but it's mostly because I'm not a fan of Daisy. I don't know. I think she was... I think she was trying so hard to be the smartest person in the room and was so mad every time when she wasn't. I just feel like, I just feel like, I don't know. I just feel like she just wasn't, I feel like there was no arc for her. Like, I feel like Julian, there was an arc. Christian, there was an arc. Magnolia, there was an arc. Even BJ got an arc. I just feel like with, with Daisy, there was no arc. I feel like she stayed the same character. Christian was everything. Anyways, <laughs> I'm so sad still. Like, I'm still so sad. And I'm tr I'm trying so hard to not be sad, but I am. So, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, but this whole series kind of broke my heart. I'm gonna have to read something very different now. Like a, like a funny book, you know? Something witty and funny and stupid, like Captain Underpants or something like that. Magnolia, you broke my heart. You broke my heart, Jessa Hastings. You broke my heart shattered it.
what would I give the whole series? Oh, the whole series, I'd probably give like a 3.99. It's so close to a four star. The only thing is, is that I don't think I will reread any of these books except for this one. This one I can see myself rereading for the rest of my life. The other ones I can see myself going and annotating just so that I can get to the quotes that I really like, the parts that I really like, and rereading those parts. But I don't see myself reading the whole series. There is a car out here. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's kind of annoying. Anyways, but I would give it a 3.99. I feel like four stars, I'm gonna reread this book. And I'm just not going to. I would, however, recommend it. Like, I will continue to recommend this book. I will continue to recommend the series. I will tell everyone that they should read this series because I do think it's a great series. But I think it's one of those series that you, like, you read one time and it stays with your with with your soul for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Like, you read it once and it's with you forever. Yeah, that's all. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for shattering me to pieces. I appreciate that and I appreciate you and um yeah this was fun so uh this was actually really fun so fun that I want to do it again so if you have any youtubers that I should read their favorite book or series or bunch of books or whatever like please leave them down below and I will also read their books and see how they are. I had fun though. I'm gonna go. Please don't forget to subscribe and comment down below any other YouTubers you want to see. Um, 